Apples have been a big tradition in the state of Minnesota for many, many years. And my grandfather had a play in that when he was a professor at the University of Minnesota. I remember when I was a kid, my grandfather talking about DDT and maybe its harmful effects on the country and the world and so forth. And that came true. And so I always was contingent of what we were doing in insecticides and pesticides and fungicides and all these things that, you know, people seem to just spray and not think about it, where I said, you know, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't like this. And so I immediately started cutting back. And, and for financial reasons as well, it wasn't cheap to do it. Back, I can remember in the 60s and 70s, my father had people just pouring bushels of apples into cardboard boxes. And that's what people bought was a bushel of apples. That's 35 pounds. Now, the average customer buys maybe three and a half, four pounds, and they don't have time to can. They don't have time to make pies. So we basically do that for them now. Folks want to come out and see what it's like to be on the farm, and they want to ride on a wagon. People want to see goats, and they want to play in the hay, and things that we just normally did every day because we could. Now people want to do it and come out, and that's what we try to provide. We grow Harrelson, Cortland, Paula Reds, Sweet 16, some of these older developed apples by the University of Minnesota, but man, you look at the brand new ones over the last few years that are just taking the apple world by storm. Honeycrisp, which is worldwide now, developed here at the University of Minnesota. The new Sweet Tango, um, the new Sweet River Bell. Uh, there's another new apple we're gonna have this year called the Pizzazz that's never been available. It's just, it's really gotten cool. And if you mix that with the whole foodie and let's eat local and then let's make sure it's healthy, it's kind of cool what's happening in the apple industry right now.